Today's tragedy in Newtown, Connecticut. He has ordered flags lowered to half staff across the country uh, to honor the victims, all 27 of them, 20 of them children. The president saying no words will ease the pain of the victims and those families who have their children home tonight uh, dealing with this tragedy. Our hearts as a nation are broken. The president speaking for so many of us and so many of you have been talking to each other on social media. I was talking about this before. We had a little audio trouble. Let's get it fixed. Let's go to Lauren Glassberg. Talk a little bit more about social media and what people are saying. Lauren. Yeah, David, this is a day when everybody is feeling so helpless. So social media is at least allowing an outlet for people to discuss their feelings. They're turning to places like Facebook and Twitter to talk about the tragic shooting. They're offering their prayers. They're venting. They're grieving. They're seeking comfort in the greater community. And on the Eyewitness News Facebook page, hundreds of you have have already sounded off to us. We have one person, Barbara Armstrong Baccio, saying elementary schools now, innocent young children, this is disgusting. What was this guy's problem? Another woman talking to us uh, saying, so sad what's going on in this world, enough. Let's stop these children, will never be the same. And on Twitter, well, we're hearing from lots of folks the trending hashtags are Connecticut, well, CON, short for Connecticut, NRA, Pray for Newtown, and Gun Control, Many of, among many of the hashtags that are trending. And some of your tweets, this is one of them, this just doesn't make any sense. Who kills anybody, much less innocent children? Newtown, my heart aches for you. And we have one father who tweeted saying, imagining being a parent outside that school with my son unaccounted for, I can't, I just can't. Uh, it's, it's tweets like that that really touch your heart. And here's another one. It's stuff like this that makes me sick. Prayers and love to all the victims of the school shooting in hashtag Newtown, hashtag Connecticut. And of course, we would like to hear from you. Obviously, this is an emotional day for people. They're just bewildered by today's events. So we'd like to hear from you. We're hearing from people around the country. You can let us know at 7 Online. You can tweet us. You can check out our Facebook page. And hopefully that will provide some comfort for people who are feeling just especially helpless on a day like today. Liz and David. Certainly helpless indeed. And uh, Lauren, Lauren, I also have to say, there has been a, an entire debate that has erupted now on Twitter about gun control, mm -hmm. uh, both for and against it. So that mm -hmm. has been interesting to see as well. Right. Well, right. Go ahead. Saying, is today really the day that we're going to talk about gun control? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe we should table that for another day. And then others are saying they're tweeting about it. Today is the day. Why are we not talking about it? When are we going to be able to talk about it and actually get something done? So that is a very strong uh, trending uh, subject that we're seeing sure. on Twitter and on Facebook. NRA, gun control, and when, why, why? and how. Mm -hmm. All right, Lauren, thank you, thank so you much. very much. One of those tweets that Lauren just showed us uh, from a parent saying, trying to imagine uh, what it would be like to be standing outside that firehouse waiting to find out whether or not mm -hmm. your child is alive or not. I would use reporter Jim Dolan has been there all day. He has watched those families walk in and walk out and he's joining us now with more. Jim. Liz, we've been uh, talking all day about the firehouse where this staging area is. Jeff Pagase has been reporting from there. Uh, it sits on a narrow two-lane road uh, called Riverville Avenue. It's barely two lanes, and it is the epicenter today, the, the place of not only joyous reunions with young children, but also the most unimaginable grief uh, possible in this world. Let's take a look at some video, and we don't know, frankly, whether these are parents or whether one of them is a teacher at the school, but they have to walk down that road, Riverville Avenue, uh, past uh, many eyes, and in front of the uh, firehouse, they are grieving almost unable uh, to, to uh, hold back the tears, unable to breathe in some cases. It has been excruciating uh, for the people there, and they have uh, one by one 
than getting the news about what happened uh, to their child, to their grandchildren. Uh, in some cases, these are teachers, of course, who saw so much in that school today, who heard the gunshots, who had to take care of their children before the, they could take care of themselves. It was, uh, it was uh, that kind of a day on Riverville Avenue, and it is in stark contrast, of course, to the parents who went to that firehouse and were reunited with their children, many of them arriving there not knowing what happened to their son or daughter, but being reunited with them there uh, and uh, hearing the news that they were okay. Uh, that is what Riverville Avenue is today, uh, both joyous reunions and uh, this unimaginable grief. Liz and David. All right, Jim, thank you so much. So much counseling ahead for so many people, from the students mm -hmm. to the parents to the first responders. We're bringing in right now Glenn Sachs. Uh, he's the chair of the Department of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry. I don't even know where to begin with this kind of a case. Uh, mm -hmm. How do you start, to, especially with a child? What, what should parents tonight, yeah. who are sitting perhaps uh, in Newtown, Connecticut, trying to grapple with what they should mm. be saying to their children or what yeah. they witnessed today. What, should, what kind of conversation do you have with your kids? Well, it, it is an unspeakable tragedy, and that's how it starts. And I think about the people in Newtown. I think about kids around the country and parents and families. And the first thing is that to understand what this really means um, for kids in the school and outside of the school, schools are places where kids learn and are supposed to be safe, and this shatters this sense of safety and security. Uh, for kids locally, but the reason it's a national tragedy is that every kid expects school to be safe, and it affects everyone. And so starting from there, the most important thing for parents to do is to bring their kids in, be attuned with what they need, reassure them as much as humanly possible that we stand for your safety and security. The adults are doing everything humanly possible to protect you and make sure you're safe. I think that that message cannot be overstated. We can't assume that kids just know that because of the meaning of this. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that that's, that's where it starts and actually ends, about reassuring and standing with our children. What about for those parents in that community tonight whose children may have witnessed something truly horrific? Yeah. I, I think, again, to be with your children, to take care of yourself. I mean, uh, parents are going through their own horrendous grief but they need to be with their children and up to helping their children who have gone through, again, unspeakable things. I think parents should, again, be mindful of are they okay enough? Bring in extended family, neighbors to help. Um, but families need to be together. You're dealing with kids in this case are between the ages like four, five to ten. I mean, how do you so yeah. how do you change your counseling approach for that age, and and can they ever truly fully recover if they w witness something horrific like this? Yes. And what specific language should, should as a parent should you say to their? Yeah. What do you say to your child? You, you know, it's it's less the words than the music. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's not like there's any magic words that are going to make things better. It's, it's giving kids of whatever age, teenagers, young kids, pre, whatever, they're there with people who will stand up and help. And, and, and to be attuned enough so you know your kid and you know their vulnerabilities and you know what they may be worried about even if they don't say it and you check in. That there's no magic here. This is just a tragedy. Use common sense, don't be, uh, and, and just be together and be assuring and be straight and answer questions and be there. You know, I was touched. Uh, one of the uh, students that were in was in the class when this happened. Is standing next to his father, and he, you know, the porter's talking to him about what happened, and he very calmly talked about it and very it was, matter of fact. with with strength and he said he said on camera I worried about my dad you know yeah. and I, I saw this maturity in this little boy and I thought to myself well wow, nobody needs to grow up this fast or have to mm. go through something like this but is there a protective mechanism at that age that allows mm. you to you know 
process this in some way that you can just kind of shake it off and move well, on? Yeah, uh, you know, from what we know from science, people are resilient. Kids are resilient. Um, about 20% of kids after a tragedy like this over the long term will end up having problems. Everyone will be right now overwhelmed with emotion and all of that but communities families people have remarkable ways of staying strong in the face of this and so um, that, that's a perspective that I think is really important now most people will be okay uh, this will not be um, devastating for someone's life for the survivors uh, of the majority of people and it really is being together, helping each other, getting through this. People rise to the occasion here, and we've seen that again and again way too often in this country. Um, and then if over time you see kids that may not be mm -hmm. settling, may be consumed with emotion over time and it's not getting better, then there are ways of helping kids. In an incident like this, I'm just wondering too, uh, you know, you often hear about tragedies where it's one person, two people. You've got a community, you've got a mm -hmm. school. That is now reeling from this. Reeling, but on the other hand, is there some sense of, of that binds them together, that will help in the healing, some kind of a, a network that they can turn to each other and say, we went through this together, and is there a healing process that comes out of this? I'm trying to look on well, a positive. No, of, of course, and, and you know, unfortunately, human beings have lived with tragedy for a long time, and the most important thing to help people get by it is the tightness of families and communities, religious communities, cultural communities. This is in some way a professional thing, and I'm a professional, but way, way, way more. It's how humans are together and can be together, and that's by far the most important thing right now. But also having gone through the same thing. They all had the same threat. Helping each other, um, and bringing in the natural ways that communities do okay, the churches, the synagogues, the mm -hmm. mosques, however it is, whatever it is to help us get through really tough things. Can we talk a little bit about the other end of the spectrum here? Um, the gunman was a... Okay, we're going to interrupt this for one second because we're just being told that there is a news conference with Newtown Police. We're going to go ahead and listen to right positive now. positive identification of those victims. That is a time-consuming process. That's something that's going to take a great deal of time. Uh, the medical examiner has already arrived in the scene. He's going to work very closely with us to expedite that and get that done as efficiently as possible. Uh, as I told you, the families have been si assigned a trooper or an officer as a line of communication. Uh, that was done specifically to ensure the families that they have constant communication with this ongoing investigation and they won't have to sit and watch, watch television news or, or anything else. They will be the first to know any of the progress that's made as this investigation uh, continues on. Uh, as I stated earlier, uh, the assets that, that were utilized initially was certainly when the call came in, Newtown Police Department immediately responded and immediately called for help. Uh, surrounding local agencies sent officers and the Connecticut State Police sent all off-duty and on-duty troopers to respond so that they could immediately gain access to that building and begin that search process that I alluded to before. Uh, we had the uh, state police tactical team. We had canine teams out here. Uh, we certainly had Trooper 1 in the air, and it was uh, probably to keep some of your helicopters away, quite frankly. Uh, but we had every possible asset came out to this scene uh, the minute that this, this alarm came in or this, this call came in. And it was certainly to do everything we could to protect uh, certainly life and property. The community has been outstanding in supporting uh, this effort. Uh, as you can see, we, you've taken over their park, and, and uh, uh, they're, they're, they're showing up. They're offering condolences. Uh, they're, they're doing everything they possibly can to support the, the victims, uh, the, the victims' families of this, this uh, horrific uh, tragedies. Uh, the uh, FBI crisis management team uh, is, is offered to respond, is going to respond here tomorrow to assist in crisis management, to assist not only with the, with the families and the family members, but with all the first responders, the police, fire, EMS, all, all working uh, at, at what I described before as a very horrific and difficult scene. Uh, certainly local mental health uh, crisis uh, intervention teams have been on scene and have been here all of the day uh, working and, and assisting and, and helping. Uh, I just want to make it very clear uh, that 
Uh, there were 18 children who were pronounced dead at the scene. There were two children who were transported to area hospital or pronounced dead at the hospital. Uh, there were six adults that were pronounced dead at the scene. And uh, obviously the, the shooter was also pronounced dead at the scene. Uh, I don't have much more detail. About